Ooh, welcome in. It's the Positively Petland Show, AM 800 KXIC. I'm Jake Capron. We have Ron Solzer here, owner of Petland of Iowa City. It's June. Summertime is upon us. Like it or not, parents, the kids are your problem now. So <laughs> take them. As they should be. As they yeah. should be. The teachers have given them back yeah. to you, and they say, here, School. take them. Hey, isn't that your theme? I played the that song. Actually, like, oh, all right. You already did it. Yes. Earlier this week on the first day of school, Alpha, that was my my theme song, little Alice Cooper. I kept playing that because I was laughing, thinking about all the parents. I thought, oh, I'll get them all the time. Well, you know what? I think most fun. of our audience is saying, I love this time. And if you are that parent that goes, oh, I'm dreading this, all I'm saying is I am the parent that you're. Um, we're losing our kids to yeah. you know, college and then beyond. And yeah. you look back on those and said, July, yeah, right? why yeah, were we stressing obviously so much? In jest. You know, the, the biggest issue really is trying to, sometimes there's a challenge with like finding, because school has set, sets up that structure where you have the, you know where they're at all the time, mm -hmm. part of the problem is you know, daycare and trying to find times to yeah. pick them up. And yes. A lot of us have working parents, you know, mm -hmm. both parents work. So when both parents work and you have younger kids, it is challenging because you have to find camps, you have to find things for them to do. And that's kind of what I'm joking about. But in in general sense, yes, they're back. But hey, it's a fun time to get out and enjoy uh, the you know what the summer has to offer and stop by Petland of Iowa City, bring your kids out there and have some fun with them if they're looking for something fun to do. Play with the pups. They love to get to get them socialized and you know, uh, you'll have a good time there for sure. So how are things things been going? Are you well, busy? Well I thought, you know, because of the schools getting out, it was what Tuesday yeah. that they all got out. We saw the traffic boost on Monday. Did you really? Yeah, I was actually. I was, was early out um, one of those days. I'm trying to think if it was. Uh, maybe no, Tuesday was the early out day. But yeah, anyway. Yeah, yeah. it's fun. I was just asking one of our employees. I said, "Hey, did you see? You know, can you tell schools out?" And she said, "Yeah, since Monday." And they went, "Well, they just got out on yeah. Tuesday, and it's so." Well, and that was the Iowa City School District. I know some of the other schools were out earlier. Cedar Rapids is till the end of the week. Oh, are they? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, those on Sunday, so. Anyway, yeah, now they're out. They're out. Yeah, baby! Uh, and so this is a show we do record at the end of the week, and then it does play Sundays in the 9 o'clock hour, so you might be listening on your way to church or on your way out doing some errands on Sunday. Just know that Thailand opens up at noon today, which would be a Sunday. Most days you guys are open at 10 o'clock, and mm -hmm. uh, you offer the $5 nail trims. You can't beat the $5 nail trims. You also have a buy 10, get one free basis for your dog food and your cat food, and you uh, are certainly proud of that, and it's a great way to help people save a little bit of money and plus get that quality food that we talk about a lot on this show. Today's program, we're going to talk about uh, the breed of the week. Of course, we always have a breed of the week to help steer the show, and it's the, the mini Aussie doodle. What does that all mean? We'll tell you. Also coming up here, the amazing pet story of the week. It's more of a general uh, news story, but it's a cool, uh, you sent it to me earlier in the week, I think it'll work well. It's about dogs that are helping to provide uh, some relief from anxiety in kids with autism. So we'll talk more about that coming up here in a little bit. Also, we're going to have some more fast tips. You guys are enjoying that, the listeners enjoying the fast tips. And so I think it'll be a fun way to continue doing that a little bit. We'll add that to the rotation here and just hit on a few topics that might be helpful for you pet owners out there that are looking for some help in a certain area. And today, how's your lawn look? When you look outside, you see those patches all over the place in the yard. And I can Raised my hand to when I was a dog owner, is that was one of the biggest problems that we had every year. Was that, I don't know if Slater's pee was um, extremely extra, potent. extra acidic or whatever the problem was, but it was you. And he, I think what multiplied it, he wasn't the dog that would go to that tree and go and come back. He just loved to go around <laughs> everywhere. And <laughs> always the, here, we were there. The fresh parts of the lawn. He couldn't go back down the patch of clover in the <laughs> corner. <laughs> he was got to go. Got to find the nice spots. It's really it's, pretty over oh, here. Looks like Swiss cheese. Now. Anyway, I wish I knew about these products and the, and the solution back then, but that could help some listeners out. So listen in. If you have some issues with uh, your lawn getting, looks like it's uh, it has holes all over it too, That uh, there's some easy solutions. We'll tell you about that. So that's coming up in our Fast Tips segment. And then as we round out, do you have a special food you're going to focus in on today? I think we're going to run long because we're also going to talk about allergies, Okay. Uh, pet allergies. So allergies that your pet has. And uh, just we're, we're going to start seeing symptoms of those right away. And we'll talk about some, some basic solutions to take care of that. I've heard more humans and people oh, I've been definitely, talking to that I'm, I'm talking about. I'm not, I don't suffer from allergies. I've been you know, a lot of guests. I talked to 
you know, people on a daily basis that come into the studio for different interviews and different reasons. And I've definitely noticed over the past month, people say, oh, my allergies are bothering me. And yeah. you're saying yours, uh, yours are. Oh, I, I haven't had a voice for two weeks. Yeah. So uh, this can help your pets. So we'll get into that. So since it is a busy show and there is a lot to get to, we'll dive right into it with the amazing pet story of the week. Let's do that. Big voice guy. Oh, he's sneezing. Look at that. <laughs> On cue. How is he going Bless you. Bless you. He's got to clear that baby up for this. His eyes are all watery. He's got allergies. Yeah. So stay tuned. Uh, what do you do, Ron? Tell Big Voice Guy what you do. Do you have a solution for those allergies? Went to, I've been to the doctor twice this year. I am on Sudafed during the day, Flonase, that's a 24 hour, so do that. Okay. Two Claritin. Whoa. Benadryl at night. Does it make you fall asleep, though? Benadryl at night, that's yeah. why, yes. And then. And then gargle with salt water, and if you're into the netting pot, doing that. Feeling better now? I got my voice back. Hey, that's good. And it's what it that's took, good. that whole thing, and now I'm starting to peel away on the Sudafed and the Benadryl. Oh, boys, I, need to I know, so he's got to go crazy like I did. How's he going to say it this time? I don't know. He just did, uh, and he sounded okay, but I, I think it's starting to go away. <laughs> right, anyway, it's time for the amazing pet story of the week. And for this story, again, uh, this is just another amazing way that animals can help us. And that's uh, usually there's a specific story about a dog or cat that saved somebody for this segment. But this is a great story. And here's uh, just to give you a little bit of uh, perspective on, on something that we just recently took part in was the amazing Autism Awareness Project. Uh, they were at uh, they were just here about a couple months ago an annual project it's in every april and what they do is they have these kids do art it's called the amazing autism art project uh, and what they do is they have these kids using art to help find ways to relieve themselves and express themselves and, and if they're angry they you know they show it through art and it was really really interesting to me because if uh, talking to some of the counselors and people they said that that was therapeutic and this reminded me right of that is that animals uh, they found here from this story it's from advocate Healthcare that animals could play a crucial role in treating children with autism spectrum disorder in the future. New research suggesting that animals may actually help reduce social anxiety and improve social skills. The study, which was funded in part by the National Institutes of Health, found that interaction with the guinea pig helped ease the stress of children with autism that felt stress and anxiety in uncomfortable social situations. So they Took, uh, researchers placed wristbands on kids with autism spectrum disorder and others without the diagnosis. A device on the wristband was used to measure the skin conductance, knowing that someone, when they're frightened, anxious, or scared, the electric charge travels faster through the skin, and the device gives researchers an objective way to measure response. So they use these wristbands, and they used over, they used, I mean, there's a big study, over 100 children, ages 5 to 12, divided into groups, and what they did is they had um, they use the, the guinea pig here for just to help soothe the, the situation. And the children with autism spectrum sort of had higher levels of anxiety throughout the process until a guinea pig was brought into the room for supervised play. As soon as that happened, the anxiety levels fell significantly, and researchers believe that, that pig, the guinea pig offered unconditional acceptance and made those children feel more secure. Mm -hmm. How about that? And not only for kids with the autism, but just that feeling of acceptance, you know, that's a that's a huge part of childhood is there, there's this feeling of wanting to be accepted. And, and for kids that are either being bullied or picked on or, you know, that, that's a that that you can see how animals could play a role because they're, they're non judgmental, Right. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. And, you know, I just think about a, a fact that all we got to do is observe our own child. And even if they lose a fish, the, you know, fish passes away for whatever reason. Our, my my child lost it, cried. You talked about so there that has too, to be yeah. that something going on there. And then this does tell. I think it was two years ago that I read a case study of an autistic child that was not uh, responding to their therapy and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. They put him. I don't know what they why they did this, or you know maybe the child suggested it. I don't know. Put him on a horse. Had multiple people supporting the autistic child. So I think there was some advanced autism. And the therapist then started doing the therapy of whatever it was, discussion, whatever it was. And 
it was a huge breakthrough. They were actually able to now communicate with the child, move him forward and advance him forward and eventually now get him off the horse and start the therapy. So it's, right. it's neat how we're finding out these things. Yeah, and the, la the last the related story I'll tell on this and then we'll move on to, to actually we'll take our break and when we come back we have a big, big show lined up, lots to talk about here today. But the last note on this and it, it reminded me about another um, Another local, there's a local tie in here too, is that the Coralville Public Library has every month what they call the Read Dogs. And those dogs come into the library and kids read to them. Now, not all the kids that read have problems doing that, but some of the kids that read have stuttering issues or issues, uh, they're slower readers. And so, in a social situation like in school, uh, unfortunately, especially as the kids get older, you know, that, that becomes a problem where they're, you know, they're stuttering, they feel more nervous because they've got all the other ears of all the other kids listening. And that's another great example of dogs being non-judgmental. I mean, they're just there to love you. And, and you sit there and you read to the dog. They build confidence and therefore they are become better readers. And I think it's a great program they have going there at the Corbel Public Library. Yeah, I've heard so, about that one. And I think, I mean, it's again, it makes sense because the kids, they enjoy, I mean, they love just the dogs being there. But then they get to actually practice their reading and do it in front of a, a dog who's not going to judge them for stuttering or for being a slower reader. So. There you go. A, a great story there. Nice to tie in. I'm glad you sent that to me, Ron. It fits perfect for the amazing pet story of the week. Coming up here next in the next part of the program, we are going to get you the breed of the week, which is the mini Aussie doodle. We'll tell you what that means coming up here, plus some fast tips on your lawn and how to prevent those yellow, ugly blotches all over the place, plus allergies in your dogs. And we'll squeeze in a dog food here today as well. So lots to get to on a very busy morning and uh, afternoon and whenever you're listening. It's a podcast for some of you. So enjoy yourself listening to this and go back and listen to some of the archives, especially if you own a certain breed. That might be fun for you to do. If you're thinking, well, they're doing this breed today for the Amazing Pets 3. Have they ever done a Weimaraner? Well, we just did. Or what about a Labrador? What about Pekingese? Chihuahua? We've gone through a lot of the breeds. In fact, I'm wagering that we've got probably talked about 75 to 100 different breeds. That's just a just a shot in the dark, but we've covered a lot. So all the the uh, breeds are up there at our podcast page. So if you want to hear about your special breed, check it out the podcast page. Also check out Petland of Iowa City, Lower Muscatine, right across from the Sycamore Mall. Now the Iowa City Marketplace. They open up at noon today. If you're listening in on Sunday, June 7th, AM 800 KXIC Iowa City. We'll be back with more after this. Let me uh, look up a, a brand new dog food. This is actually from Green Process GPC down in Muscatine. Sure. And I've already gotten some reviews from customers on it. But I, it's the name is not a memorable name. This is the only thing. No. Like right now, I can't. Other markets, come on. Animal and pet nutrition, animal gluten. Maybe even their website is not advocating the dog food. <laughs> oh, come on. What's another, oh, oh gosh, what name do they put it under? Or what? Yeah, GPC is the name of the plant, but they also are Kent, and maybe that's what's happening here. <laughs> you want to call your, would help you call your stickers? Yeah, it might be quicker. I don't know if I can get Jordan on the phone, she's already using. She's using that first? Yeah. Um, on, now that's going to be only the second one. We used to do, uh, 
you know, whatever you want to feed your dog, we'll just talk to the manufacturer and get it to you for free. Free employee. Yeah. Whoa. But the manufacturer had to support it. Mm -hmm. And everybody said yes, but only one. Hey, Cassara, this is Ronnie. How are you doing? Hey, I'm trying to remember the, you know, that name of the dog food that uh, Jordan just tried. Do you know what the name of it is? It's in the office, I think. All right. So they weren't paying us bad. Yeah. And so I said, okay. Yeah. By nature. Here, let me just put it in to make sure I can. Where's the shift key? There it is. By nature. See, I was even saying, I go, they have a bad name for that. By nature? Are you kidding me? What does that even mean? Dog food. All right, I am seeing bags coming. Okay, I got it. Thank you very much. All right, bye -bye. Ooh, by nature of foods, official site. Got it. It's coming out. I see the brand. Come on, come on. I just wanted to have it live so that when we talk about it, I can reference sure. it. All right, I do have it now. And, oh, why by nature? A brand that cares, a food that protects, a unique approach. Hello, this is Ron. Hey, how are you doing? You got the internet going? Woohoo! All right. I'm excellent. Thank you for letting me now know. Um, and you're officially on the radio right now. No, I'm just joking. We're I'm recording our uh, I do a weekly radio show on AM eight hundred and we took a pause and my phone rang and I'm like, yo, let me just grab it real quick here. So so you're avoiding it by just seconds. <laughs> All right, thank you. All right, bye. Ready to rock and roll? Mm-hmm. Welcome back. It's the Positively Petland Show, AM 800 KXIC. Iowa City. We hope you're doing well. I'm Jay Caper. Ron Salzer here. He's the owner of Petland of Iowa City with his wife, Wendy, the rest of the family. And they are happy to be part of the Iowa City community here and to help provide family members to all the families out there, which you might be the next person to bring home a pet from Petland of Iowa City. In the first segment, we talk a bit about the amazing pet story and how it's great how these dogs are able to help provide relief from anxiety in autistic children and children who are on the autism spectrum uh, line there. And also we talk a bit about uh, the library and some other things, uh, some other ways that the pets can help out and ease anxiety. And so we talked about that. And now coming up here, we are going to feature the breed of the week, which is the mini Aussie doodle. We've got tips on how to prevent your yard from looking like Swiss cheese with all those holes out there. And then we'll also talk about allergies in your pets and a brand new dog food. All of that coming up here on the Positively Petland Show. So, Ron, uh, let's go to the amazing, uh, let's go to Breed of the Week. Breed of the Week, the, the mini Aussie doodle. Okay, the Aussie so, part, I get. The so, then that's a new part, right? They're yeah. Mixing them together. So, it's a miniature on both sides. So, a miniature Australian Shepherd purebred uh, mixed with a miniature poodle, and you get the mini Aussie doodle. And I think you're going to have this up on Facebook, so you can browse through the KXIC Facebook and see some uh, some photos there. Um, you can also go to PetlandIowaCity.com 
and we'll have them up there as well so you get to see what this looks like. I will say this is like an above average, way above average cute dog. Uh, we'll talk about the temperament and the maintenance on this, uh, this dog as well to see, you know, we always want to go, is this the right breed for you? Um, we, at Petland, we have purebreds, uh, and then we also have mixed breeds that are mixed from two purebreds. And so you have a little bit of an idea of what they're going to do when they grow up as far as looks. If it's a mixed breed with a mixed breed, then you're not sure what's going to happen there. So that's why we do what we do. Uh, for those of you that have, are still on that route of, I only want a mixed breed and nothing but a mixed breed, realize that all mixed breeds were, uh, all purebreds were, I think I said that totally wrong. <laughs> <laughs> those people that are really into the purebreds um remember all purebreds were mixed breeds from the past they so they were designing the breed to do something whether it was hunting showing they're literally uh, thousands of years ago were breeding for family dogs as well um so so even today that still is going on and this would be one of those where you'd go holy cow that's a phenomenally uh, beautiful looking dog and, and uh, we'll talk here now about, you know, a little bit about the history of both the Australian Shepherd and the Poodle to get a feel for what this uh, new mini Aussie Doodle is going to be as a dog itself. So we just did the Australian Shepherd not too long ago. Uh, where do you think the Australian Shepherd originates from? Oh, no. <laughs> no way. Uh, th they're not quite sure, but the Pyrenees Mountains is where where they think somewhere between Spain and France is where that dog was developed. It became the Australian Shepherd when it was brought to America. They weren't calling it yet that. In the 1800s, um, it looked like the, what is it, the Basque Shepherds from Australia. And they, they then started saying, oh, that's the Australian Shepherd. So that's where that name mm. came from. But it's actually from the Pyrenees Mountains uh, in those, that's, Spain, France region. And it's a herding dog. So that is a definitely a dog that um, smart, obedient, uh, you know, agility, all those kind of uh, adjectives were, would be great for this guy. Um, apartment living for the, and this is the standard Australian that I'm talking about now. So the mini, you know, we're getting down to smaller ones. Um, you know, it, it's a debate of whether it's going to be good in your apartment condo, but definitely loves, you know, yards and running around. It has energy that it wants to get out so vigorous activity extended exercise especially for the larger australians now you can scale that back as you get into the mini aussies because to let out that same amount of energy per poundage of dog um, you don't have to run as far and all that so the smaller houses then start coming into play for the miniature australian shepherd is going to need some brushing um, it is a sh the, the the australian shepherd and miniature australian shepherd is a shedding dog so the Ferminator, like we talk about, is, is your friend here. Good nutrition, high omega-3s fatty acids are good in their nutrition to minimize that shedding, but it will not eliminate it. Um, and so that's a, a quick snapshot of the Australian. So let's just now jump over to the Poodle. So where does the Poodle originate from? Poodle. Yeah, this, again, that's where I would have thought too. Nope, Germany. <laughs> um, same, almost, you know, pretty close right there. Um, water dog. Think of a uh, uh, really intense uh, hunting dog that'll go through the water and all that. You know how, and remember, uh, why do they have those really crazy cuts for poodles? It's coming back. Uh, yeah. It's for the safety of the dog. When this dog runs into cold water, those poofs, if they're in the right place today still, they were making the fur thicker in joint, heart, Areas where they wanted to preserve the heat. Why wow. is why is the nose shaved on a poodle? So they can go through the water quicker. Huh? Isn't that just interesting? That, that you know, whether yeah, we, I always thought it was a cosmetic deal. It has its origins in yeah. in function, you know, type yeah. thing. Now we can debate whether it really did anything or not. <laughs> but <clears throat> so so it is again an active dog, and we are talking about a miniature poodle that was bred with the miniature Australian she uh, shepherd to make the mini Aussie doodle. So the miniature poodle is a fine uh, apartment dog, you know, inside dweller. Um, they actually call the poodle low activity, but put put another spin on this 
extremely smart dog. And so they are, they want your attention. Poodles want to be interacting with you. Um, their exercise requirements might be on the small, lower side, the miniatures, um, but they definitely want to be engaged with you. Uh, hey, one of the neat things about poodles, and they would go right into the Bichon freezes, is hey, easy on allergy sufferers. So those people with allergies, this is a non-shedding dog. They even uh, are better than average on the non-shedding aspects of poodle and the Bichon. If you're having that, those kind of issues, are a great breed to look at. Uh, if you're wanting to bring that into the house and have your child or yourself exposed to it and you do have allergy issues, I always say, hey, try that things out uh, beforehand uh, before you make that commitment, obviously. So now you put those two together and you have a, a fairly active you know, dog, a dog that's going to keep up with you if you're uh, going for a run or anything like that. Um, smart dog, that poodle is going to put some good intelligence into it. Um, the two that we have in the store, the color, are what's called Merle. And so it's a combo of colors and spots and beautiful colors that come out on the miniature Australian Shepherd. It's going to be a less shedding dog. It's not a non-shedding dog. The Poodle is a non-shedder, and then the Australian is definitely a shedder. Mix those two together and you get somewhere in between and you never quite know until it's an adult and you see what's happening. Uh, if you've not noticed puppies tend to not shed at the beginning because they're still growing out that first line of hair and so it hasn't started falling off again but you know, around that 20 week mark uh, you're definitely now if it's a shedding dog you're starting to see those shed that shedding occur so at the age these guys are at at eight weeks right now um, you're not going to see much shedding but don't use that as a barometer of what the future is going to be like you, you kind of are in a I'm not sure zone. It's somewhere between a poodle of a non-shedder and then uh, the Australian Shepherd. Active dog for sure and smart dog. That's the two things that I would bring out on that. A little on the smaller side, so the activity can get done within the house, but this guy's going to enjoy outside time, running around the yard, going for walks, going for a light run, maybe not a long distance run of any kind, but a, a nice light run uh, where most of us, I think, are. This dog's going to be right with you and saying, hey, yeah, I love this stuff. When are we going to Nick again? Kind of thing. Dog voice. The dog voice is the best. Does it come out? Yes. Now, Ron, uh, if, if our listeners are curious, as always, you can check out on our website. We post the pictures. And on your website, of course, CutlandIowaCity.com, uh, your website stays up to date with the ones that are actually available at the time, which is nice. So that way people can see at uh, any given moment what, which pups you have at your store. Uh, but if you just want to see what this particular dog looks like, you can go to KXIC. Iowa City Petland of Iowa City blog. It's just at kxic.com. Just find the pet show, and you'll see a picture of the, uh, one of the two pups that was available at time of recording. That uh, that he's talking about the mini Australian Shepherd, super cute dog. Uh, you can see that merle color that you talked about there. They just a, an adorable dog there, and uh, maybe we'll uh, be going home with your family here. The mini Australian Doodle, the mini Aussie Doodle, the pet amazing pet story, or the excuse me. I'm all over the place too. Uh, it is the breed of the week. Is there anything else you want to mention on this? I think that about covers the, you know, the, the just a general scope of what that dog's on. Okay, great. Because we're going to get to some fast tips now. We're going to do fast tips on the, the lawn and fast tips on allergies. So we'll get that music back again here. And <coughs> oh, the <laughs> keep me on pace. I'm firing away here. So we've got these uh, different products, and uh, going back to the the main issue at hand is that you know dogs fill the bathroom in your yard, and when they go number one. Uh, if they're like my dog, they go all over the place and they, they cause these holes all over. So that's due to the acidity in their urine. We know the problem. What's the solution, Ron? All right. And, there, you know, there's nitrogen contents and, and all sorts of stuff. So with that here, you know, hey, non-chemical chemistry feeding or anything that you're doing, um, if you can dilute that area, that's your number one way of, of handling it. So uh, you could have a sprinkling can you know, at, on the porch and when you let the dogs out as they urinate, just sprinkle in that area and you actually will dilute that out so that it won't stay in the yard. It just is, it's like uh, over fertilizing your lawn and, you know, when it actually dumps in the lawn, mm -hmm. you kill the lawn in that area. It's just over abundance of, a, of the substance and so that it just burns and it just can't keep up with it. Same thing happens when your dog is urinating. Um, male dogs are a little different how they pee than the female dogs. And and so one, uh, let's see, the female tends to burn more because it's just in one localized area mm -hmm. where the guy gets a little wild. And so you, <laughs> you kind of want the one guy, you know, because he gets it all over the place and he's automatically diluting it out. Another way that Slater was different is that he didn't like to go to the bathroom. 
Yeah, so he he zeroed in, man. He lasered it oh, yeah. into one area, and so that's why that area was burning more for that dog as opposed to another. There you go. So sprinkling can. So oh, that's right. We're on the speed. So diluting things out is your your sense. your number one. Second thing is is making sure that there's plenty of water uh, for your dog. If you're limiting for potty training or on uh, or whatever, um, you are concentrating up that urine, and so just adequate water source for them and, and getting more water through your dog is going to also help in that and then the third thing we haven't even gotten to any solutions you know like a hey, adding adding anything to what you're doing the third thing is is your nutrition when you go to a higher quality nutrition uh most of them do put products in there to help minimize the stains um so I think you knock out a, another 50 percent of the dogs out there that stop staining just because you you've jumped up to a higher quality nutrition. Hmm. So those are the first three things that I would do. Now in my house, okay, I've done all those, man. I, I'm, I don't have the sprinkling can. Um, I, my uh, kids, they let the dog out, they don't do anything, and all that kind of stuff, think, so that wasn't working. Yeah, I think the sprinkling can would take a certain situation, because I don't know how many people actually stand and watch exactly where their dog goes in their backyard. I mean, if you're gonna pick up right after them, then I guess you follow them around but some people let their dogs go and then they'll go pick up every few days or whatever whatever the issue is. But yeah. to actually watch where they go. That's a tough one. I, I agree. And it's, it's a small part of our population that's yeah. going to do that. Right. But it's a it's an easy, quick way. Now, what I have done with my dogs is I've tried all the different – you can get this stuff in liquid. You can get it in tablets. You can get it in biscuits. Um, all sorts of different ways of now uh, when they eat this, drink this – then it alters the pH of their urine and prevents it from staining the yards. What I have found that you can't just do it and then go, I should expect the best results. I've, with my own dogs, I had to up the dose a little bit compared to what the package showed. Hmm. And so, you know, if yeah, you're not, no. yeah, if you're not seeing the results and it's still, you know, hey, new spots, I'm doing it, you know, but new spots are showing up, then. Uh, up the dose a little bit. I, I only had to do it a little bit, and then it solved it. So it was just a little bit to push it over. So the uh, some of the easy ones is I what I really like is the liquid, uh, because every time they drink, they get it into their system, so that goes through the urinary tract and it follows it. So the liquid to me is the one that makes the most sense, because every time they drink it, it's going to treat it and it's going to do the right thing on it. Some of you might go, yeah, I like the liquid, but the cost is a little out of my league. I, I can I do this cheaper? You know, I got a huge dog. You know, so that's when you get into the tablets and the biscuits. They all do exactly the same thing. So is in the liquid, the Grass Saver brand too. I couldn't see that. Yeah, right now I'm looking at Nature Vet products. So that's the manufacturer, and the line of products is called Grass Saver, and the Grass Saver is stopping the yellowing. Uh, uh, areas within your lawn mm -hmm. um, and it's all 100% guaranteed and all that kind of stuff. So what I do at my house is I have one dog that will eat anything and so I can I can do the budget you know the tabs are always the cheapest way to go. I give the tab and she eats it. I have another dog that won't do that. We'll sniff it. So I've gone to the biscuits and the chews for her and I even though they have to break them up in her food for her to take them in. But what I also do because I, I remember I said I do it, but I needed a little bit more. I bought one of the tablets and I, I crushed them and I sprinkle it in their food. And so I'm upping it on their food, plus I'm putting the chew for that one um, to get her to get it in. And that is what solved the problem in my dog for my dog. So you've got uh, biscuits, tablets, bis uh, liquid, Tablet, yeah, that I got it all. There wasn't any more. So grass saver, there you go. Bam. Okay, so that's yellow spots. Any questions? No. Class? Uh, I think that's good. There's a lot of options out there. Yeah, we had like, uh, I wish I knew about that when we had Slater because that used to drive me nuts. I did my daily, my not daily. It was my annual event of going out with my, the the turf builder patch kit. That's 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 that stuff that you put out there. With it's like comes in blocks with its grass seed built in and it's. Um, you, you, mm -hmm. you patch it around, and then yeah. you water it, and then you grow back your lawn. I just that was my solution. So, like, oh, I have more grass. I'll find out. You know, so yeah. this is probably cheaper, and uh, it made and that never. Well, it's going to keep the yeah. grass green rather than getting into that spot. Hey, notice, you know, we're going through a heavy water air. You know, the, mm -hmm. a lot of rain and all that kind of stuff. So you are getting a lot of dilution uh, of that urine right now. 
as we go into the drier the seasons, out, yeah. you're going to see a lot Always more spots develop. So, yeah, and the grass starts to yellow in the summer anyway. So you have uh, that all added on to that. And our, our last solution, I'll say, and if you're really desperate, green spray paint. There you go. Green spray paint. <laughs> Can't say I've tried that myself, but maybe that would work. Another tip, though, on that is probably don't do that. Yeah. I don't want to get that. I'm not liable. For I that. just take a dog them on that. that one. Yeah, yeah, that's not, not a good. Anyway, go ahead. Um, the last tip on the staining is is do it year round. Even in the winter, this is occurring in your grass. So when it uh, things thaw out that year and just falls right into the the grass, and that is when I saw actually in my grass most of the staining occur was early spring. All of a sudden, everything started dying. I'm like, what the heck is going on? You're not even urinating that much to to cause that. It was all the winter urination that was frozen in the snow that thawed and went into the grass. So, all right, so even in the winter. Grass saver, there's our tips on the yellowing of the grass. Now, allergies. Allergies. So let's start off with just talking about allergies. One is, is you can have stomach allergies. You can have skin allergies. You can all have eye allergies, ear allergies. You can have all sorts of symptoms coming out. And what you want to do is look at what it is and then look for, is there an easy way to help my dog with this? And this is kind of, you know, if it's extreme, go to your veterinarian. That's, you know, by far, they're going to be the most complete. They're uh, in those uh, more extreme cases, they're going to do allergy testing for your dog. And they're going to, you know, focus right in on what it is. They're going to actually help your dog to become non-allergic to that product, whether it's grass or whatever. And then uh, they're going to help your dog get some, uh, some relief if it's an extreme situation. So your dog just can live life kind of thing. What we're going to talk about is you can do this with all the dogs. Even if you are going down that path, these products will help your dog have healthier skin, healthier, you know, digestive systems and all that kind of stuff so that uh, you can help them alleviate and possibly give them the relief that they need to get through the season. Um, the first thing is a lot there. This is the season where we see a lot of skin allergies come out and you know it by if it's a skin allergy. One of the symptoms is, is, hey, the paws on my dog uh, are getting really raw and he's chewing them and his fur is leaving because he's chewing so much and oh, it's an open wound now type thing. Um, that's a, a strong indication that there's an allergy that's coming in contact with the foot. In the summer, it's commonly the grass. They're allergic to the grass. And so one way to uh, help your dog is through just making sure that their diet, it has the healthy uh, skin and coat type products that it needs, omega-3s, fatty acids. We know they work for people. They also work for dogs and cats. And so uh, the first group of products is all about omega-3s and fatty acids. So those salmon oil, again, I'm looking at in the studio here, a bunch of nature vet uh, products. So salmon oil, a concentrated salmon oil, you squirt it right over the food mm. is a really good product, but they have it in tablets as well. Uh, I love uh, Nature Vets. One of the most popular products I see people grabbing are the love drops. I, I don't know why they call them love drops. I think it's because you love your, your pet so much, you're going to get this thing for them. But it's to help the skin and coat. So not only omega-3s and uh, fatty acids and 6s, it has rose hips in it. It has a lot of, it's a complete vitamins and mineral product. It also has brewer's yeast and garlic, which is one of those anecdotal type. Hey, a lot of people use it, swear by it. Mm -hmm. uh, I just haven't read any study that says it actually works or anything right. like that. But there's a ton of people that say it does. I'm going to chime in just a quick. I'm going to let that music pass. This is going faster. I'm trying to go fast. I'm it's, failing. It's in, just in not my working because I, I always say next. And it's not. I, I am going through things yeah, at, at a faster pace than I. I'm okay with that. All right, because I don't want to. I don't want to make it too much of a rush. But we could have some good talks for some of our clients. So that's okay. Uh, we have about five more minutes left. All right. The show, so we, okay. We, so let's finish it up uh, by talking about. Uh, okay, we talked about omega threes, fatty acids. The last group of products on that type of things are things that go after you know, the itch that's occurring. And so sulfidine is a product that's been out there for a long time and is we've it's a mainstay in our store. And it's something, it's kind of like an oily product that has some reliever in it that will help the itches and all that kind of stuff. So sulfidine is another great product for dogs that have those hot spots, those allergy type issues. Um, some uh, nature vet has one that has the reliever in it, but it also has an anti-lick in it because a lot of times when they're 
they're literally licking their hair so much that it's coming off. So getting Nature Vet, Allure 911 Anti-Lick Paw Spray is a great product because it relieves the itching, but it also puts uh, something nasty on there so that they, when they lick it again, they go, oh, that's, I don't like that. Uh, you do have to reapply that product you know, over and over again. Mm -hmm. They have them in various forms, other hotspot foams, uh, 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 shampoos that will uh, directly uh, uh, treat the area. So you want to treat it from the inside. That's those omega-3s and fatty acids. And then the outside with topical ointments and things like that. Shampoos, hotspot sprays, that sulfidine. Um, things like that is what you're looking for. A lot of selection there, and uh, I think a lot of us have seen those dogs that are itching, and you just feel bad for them because they're just scratch, scratch, scratch. Sometimes it makes me want to itch too. I feel itchy, itchy. Oh man! I think you itchy. got other issues, yeah, probably. probably. And so, as we wrap up today, one last note is on the the food. You said there's one with more of a local tie-in. Is that right? Yeah, I just wanted to, something that's brand new coming out on the market. Um, if you haven't been down to Muscatine, there's a production plant down there called Grain Processing Company, and it's just a it's a, a large local grain processing company. I mean, I think it's all in the name. And over the years, um, you might recognize their litter for cats, and that's a uh, world's best cat litter. And it's made from uh, corn in the corn husks and stuff like that. So it's an all natural product. And they develop different things. And they are, uh, they've been working on the dog and cat food for some time. And they've come out with a new uh, product called By Nature. And we have it in our store. And uh, we're actually working with them directly to come up with some deals so that you can try this product and, and see how it works very economically and I'll talk about that in the future on how economical that will actually be but it's going to be very but they'll have it in a grain-free product um, balanced diet products but basically what they're trying to come out with is something that's really uh, proactive on nutrition for your dog high quality proteins um, hey it's and it's right here in our state uh, the grains that are used in there in the, the grain based products are all Iowa grains, so I like that tie-in as well. Um, they're going to be high in anti I can't get the word out. Antioxidants. Um, they actually have put this in what's called the superfoods category, which tends to get into that holistic side of things, where the whole of the food is being used. And I know a lot of us are conscious of the uh, what we're putting into our bodies, and that it's the whole grain of this and the whole grain of that, or the whole parts of that. Um, that's the that's the concept that they brought to the table on it. And then pre prebiotics are going in there. Uh, and again, these are things, I don't know if everybody's doing them. Uh, I'm not one to really buy into a lot of the, the stuff that's out there, the healthy, you know, whatever. I'll, I'll eat the pizzas and all that kind of a thing right along, the fried chicken and all that. But I do make sure that I get the vegetables in my diet, I, uh, the prebiotics, the yogurts, you know, that kind of a stuff in there. And I just thought I love this product because it had a lot of uh, local tie-in, but a, a lot of high-quality stuff that I know our, our pets will benefit from, like what we just talked about. Um, I do have uh, already the first customer testimonial on it. They were feeding, uh, a, you know, an existing product, really good quality. Everything was fine. They brought this in just to see what it would do. Their dog won't eat the other food anymore, and I'm like, oh. We kind of missed you out there, didn't you? And so they did make the switch, and they just said, you know, our dog woofs this stuff down where it was pick and choose before. They said they even tried to mix it back in with the other food, and it was one of those. They, they didn't realize dogs can do this. They can go around and pick out the food they like and leave the ones that they don't like in there. Um, I am not advocating, uh, though, that if your dog won't eat it, it doesn't mean that it's a bad food. Um, and if you held out long enough, your dog would eat it when it got hungry enough. I always bring out, you know, our, our kids love fast food um, and, and would eat it every day and every meal if we let them. But the real good food is the ones that we're making at home and all that kind of thing. So you just let them get a little hungry and they're going to eat the broccoli eventually, you know, mm -hmm. kind of a thing. So dogs and cats will do exactly the same thing. But by nature, uh, made by a muscatine uh, company called general process, grain processing company, GPC down in Muscatine. So it's got a nice local tie-in. I love it. All right. Well, that's all the time we have for the Positive Repellent Show. It's zipped along as it always does. And we certainly hope you enjoyed it. If you just tuned in and missed it, well, 
podcast is available at kxic.com. It's also where you can see the breed of the week, which happened to be the mini Aussie doodle. Very cute picture of that pup up there on our website, kxic.com. You can also visit PetlandIowaCity.com. And as always, feel free to stop by Petland Iowa City opening up at noon today if you're listening in on Sunday, June 7th. If you're listening in at some other time, uh, most of the other days, you're open at uh, 10 o'clock. And they're happy to give you that those uh, $5 nail trims for your dogs. Free puppy classes on Sunday. Buy 10, get one free basis on your foods. And, Ron, anything else you want to squeeze in? Have fun. Come in and play. That's right. Go play. Have some fun with those pups. For Ron Solzer, I'm Jay Caper. This has been the Positive Cutland Show. Bye. Ha, 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 ha,